Well, since most of my videos don't have any information about what's going on behind the scenes, I thought I'd make this video to show what actually goes on and what it looks like from my perspective instead of where the camera's facing. On this table, I have all of the electronics that I've been using in most of the videos. And of course, the main transformer would be the Bariac. This Bariac's got a bit of an inrush current, as you might have been able to tell. It, um, it provides 25 amps continuous and 30 amps peak. Although I've never gotten it probably anywhere above that, except for when my capacitors short out. It does momentarily. But continuously I've never probably gotten above 10 or 15 amps on the mains. And it hasn't even gotten warm yet. And well, here's some of the stuff that I use. Most of the time I'm using this. Um, this is a clamp meter that also does volts and uh, resistance. I usually use this one because it's a digital display. And it's probably a little, it's much quicker and it, I can read it a little bit better if I'm trying to keep it within a certain range. So I usually have this clamped around the wire that's leading out to wherever I'm popping or running. But what I was trying to set up over here were these two little meters here. This is a voltmeter and an amp meter. The voltmeter goes up to 150 volts and the amp meter goes up to 30 amps. And I've actu actually got a voltmeter right on the Variac. But this one's a little bigger, and I'm thinking of putting this on a little uh, panel, if I can manage to make it look neat. But anyway, when I'm running experiments, I get anywhere from 0 to 145 volts. And that's perfect for what I need it for. And the amps, of course, will be on the output side. That's what I, that's what I measure which would be on the secondary side, which is the bottom one there, to the output. And that, um, I usually go up to around 25 amps max on that one. So it, they both have good ranges for what I need them for. And then over here, I have a really cheap little diode set that I made up, because I haven't gotten good diodes yet. It's just two on each side and parallel. And over here I've got that transformer that I modified. And I've also got one over here that puts out, I think it's around 415 volts. And I just use this transformer once in a while to test high voltage on things. I use this for uh, testing the mains to see how much current something is pulling. And I would use this clamp meter around the hot wire so I can get a reading. And of course I can use this for voltage and all that. And then also a soldering iron, which is a must. And then here are the fuses that I was using 15 amp fuses on the capacitor videos and over here I have the inline wire connectors and over here are something I just made up recently it's a um, it's a tire air pump and I took batteries from my old electric scooter which is over there and I converted it to a gas scooter can't really see it and yeah, they came off of this scooter here and I put that gas engine on it it's a friction drive Stuff that I'm going to eventually pop or burn up. This here is a motor from a mixer. And in here I have a bunch of capacitors from another TV. This being the biggest, non-vented. I'm kind of interested to see what this one will do. I've had capacitors like this, but they were vented, and this one's not. So, well, as far as I know, it could be vented on here. But we'll see with that one. But I've got a lot of stuff to pop here. And this one here is all my old electronics, which you possibly might have seen on the very first videos that I had. But most of that stuff in the old videos I gave to my friend. It's beginner level stuff. Stuff that is harmless. This is all just stuff I really don't think I'll even use. i got to go through it. And over here is my, um, it's my box of things I can destroy. Except this, or modify in some way. This here is a bug zapper that the high voltage side of the transformer broke I can pop all this stuff, there's motors, there's um, just electronics things like that and that's about it for the electronics part that's about all I've got as far as I remember that's the old wire from the transformer when it was modified before oh, and the electric meter there it is, all cleaned up alright so that's all, that's about it basically the variac and a voltmeter and an ammeter that's all you need Infuses, of course. 
Oh, and also here's the lead that I use to run it outside. I'm supposed to be. This is a. Uh, it's too thin. This wire. I gotta. I'm probably gonna be getting 12 gauge wire so I can not have so much resistance in it. I can only run about 15 amps of this wire before it starts to get warm. So when I get 12 gauge wire, I'm not gonna have that problem anymore. And under the pressure experiments, this is a Craftsman 20 gallon air compressor. And by the way. It is a 240 volt air compressor, as you can see by the plug. Just like my Variac, I have control, and this compressor goes up to 120 psi. Just like on the Variac, the input's 120 volts. I can. It's completely variable with the style here. Usually, when you hear me counting off numbers, that's because I'm turning up the style. So I would say 20, 40, 60, all the way up to about 120. That should be about it. And this one here is the main tank pressure, and it's very close to 120. And it's completely variable. So it's just like a Variac, but it's for pressure up in my pressure experiments. It's the same thing, really. And there's the hose reel that gets it outside. And here are the three adapters I've used. This one was just a normal nozzle. It's like an air gun, and I've been. That was the first thing I ever tried was putting an air gun right into the cap of the water bottle. Of course, that didn't work because it kept falling off. So then I ended up going to this. This idea I got from another YouTube video. They were using a, uh, a tire nozzle like this, and uh, this is, I actually have two of them. The one that I had before this broke. It broke right here. One of one of the water bottles exploded. It snapped right off. But this was my second idea. This one worked all right. Um, after a while, I started making like a whistling noise after I would blow it up. That's because this little thing inside of here shot off with one of the water bottles. And after it shot off, that's when I started making that noise. And I think on one of my videos, the first clip doesn't do that, but then the second one does because that's the that's actually the raw footage from when it blew out. You can't I don't think you can see it though. And to the third design, it's this very simply universal fitting for an air tool and this is the easiest one out of all the three most efficient so that's the one I'm using now I don't have any videos of that up to this point but um there will be sometime soon and over here is my supply of water bottles I have an entire garbage bag full of them caps and everything so um I have plenty of them saved up for the next time I want to blow some more up I was messing with this a little bit I was using this as more so as a rocket. And how I'm able to do that is if this nozzle is on the bottle, all I have to do is put the bottle at a certain pressure and then just release that. And the pressure from the bottle is going to shoot that off like a rocket. And I've, I've messed around with that a little bit, but I haven't uploaded any videos of that at this point because everything is pretty uncontrollable with that. So that's really about it. Well, there's varying voltage on my Variac. More pressure on my air compressor. It's really, it's really quite simple. What actually goes on? It's not too complicated. I really didn't do too many good electrical experiments until I got my Variac. But like I said before, this spring I'm gonna have to pop all these capacitors in here and all the stuff in this box. There are some good ones in here. I just have me down to them. They're probably at the bottom. Another motor down there. Well, that's about it. That's all the electronics that I'm using. Nothing too complicated. I just don't show it behind the scenes because I don't want to record with one more camera view. I do have two cameras I could use, but usually I call out the voltages that I'm that it was at when, it, or the pressure that it was at when it popped. That makes it simple enough. Maybe a little bit later I can put a little section of the video in the corner. That way you can see what voltage I'm using and the amperage on the right side. So while the experiment's going on, in the corner of the screen you probably see something like this.
I'll think about it. Situation calls for it. I'll try to make it work. See if I can actually do that with my video editing. All right. Well, you've seen it all. Everything I do behind the scenes. Catch you in the next video.